The inciting event of The Last of Us series is the Cordyceps outbreak, a fungal infection that spreads throughout the entire world, changing everything. The cordyceps fungus infects the brain and gains control of the motor functions of the host with the prime directive of seeking out non-infected and spreading the fungus wider and farther. It is most commonly spread through a bite, but also by breathing the spores that are often emitted from the remains of a fallen infected. Now in the initial stages of infection, the hosts still look human and they run at their prey. Over time though, shrooms start bursting out out of their heads, and their approach shifts as they begin stalking their prey instead. Soon, that fungal growth eventually covers the eyes, so that the infected must now rely on echolocation, and they become hypersensitive to even the smallest sound. From here though, things just only get scarier, with explosive spore growths forming over them. And after years, they puff out and bloat into these hulking beings who can fling their spore dump all over you. And this isn't even the end, as there are even more vile evolutions lurking in the dankest, darkest depths. And this is how you can expect things to go if you are exposed to the fungus. But none of these things happened to Ellie after she got bitten in that mall years ago. Dr. Pooplove here, and today I want to talk about cordyceps immunity and how this unique trait could play a role in The Last of Us Part 3. And stick around because I want to talk about the recent lore, which goes into the origins of this immunity and how Ellie might actually not be the only one. Let's get right into it. Now, of course, The Last of Us Part 1 centers largely around the hope for a cure. Joel and Tess are tasked by the Fireflies to smuggle Ellie, a girl immune to the cordyceps fungus, all the way across post-apocalyptic America to a hospital in Salt Lake City, where there is a doctor who can reverse engineer it into a cure. This becomes a main focus point in The Last of Us Part 1. But in The Last of Us Part 2, immunity and a cure doesn't really get talked much about. You can argue that Joel really extinguished that flame of hope through his actions at the end of part one. And that might actually be a signifying event that this isn't some happy fairy tale where everything is going to end up right in the end. Arguably, even if a cure did work, society has devolved so much and humans really are the biggest threat that would it really make much of a difference? And so through much of the story, we don't hear much about Ellie's immunity. There are a few moments where she is able to use her ability to her advantage, but there doesn't seem to be much more importance beyond that. Until we find out through the eyes of Abby and Lev that the Fireflies are reforming, and so maybe they have found a new way forward, or perhaps they may have inadvertently replicated the unique conditions that allow for this immunity. Because we actually now know how Ellie became immune through the HBO show. Now, the show, while very faithful to the game, was able to add some new lore that we didn't know about, like the the fact that much of the cordyceps virus spread through the wheat supply. Of course, not all the lore from the show can be taken as canon. Like the tendril system doesn't really exist as a major mechanic in the games. There isn't some long ranging communication method between the infected that calls upon more and more hordes. And there also isn't this mouth to mouth mycelium transfer that occurs. But I still think some of the lore can be assumed to be canon. Like in the last episode, they made a point to show Anna, Ellie's mother, and the events that surrounded her death and Ellie's birth. Anna was bitten just moments before delivering Ellie, and the umbilical cord was cut a little bit late, allowing some of the fungus to perhaps enter into Ellie's bloodstream. I'm guessing. I'm not a real doctor. Now, this minor exposure, possibly in combination with a developing immune system, created these conditions for immunity. And that means so much for The Last of Us Part 3. First of all, at a minimum, I do think it's important that they show these events with Anna in the next entry. I could actually see it opening the game, really. Like, perhaps we think we're playing a new character and it's sometime in the future, but it's actually Ellie's mom. And we see how this plays out in the game. I think this is too important to not show somewhere in the main story. But this new lore also implies a lot of things. And really the main thing is it means that Ellie might not be alone. Yes, these conditions are pretty rare, but it is likely to have occurred before. So even though Joel thought he was lying about there being more immune people, he was actually right. 
there may be a lot more. And it actually doesn't necessarily require a brain surgeon to replicate this process. However, it does take a mother's sacrifice. It's possible that somewhere, some group of people has discovered this method of immunity. And there might even be some sick faction. Heck, maybe it's even the fireflies that are looking to create the next generation of immune humans by sacrificing mothers. It would be interesting if the ray of hope that took Abby and Lev to Catalina to see the fireflies was them actually discovering that they were doing this to people. And what's almost brilliant here is you're basically recreating the conditions of the first game where the fireflies were intending to sacrifice Ellie for the good of humanity. You're basically recreating those conditions, except in this case for all mothers and for the good of humanity. And does this change the weight of that choice? Before it was one to save the many, what about many to save the species? And I wonder how this might cause internal conflict with Abby who believed she was fighting for a good cause back then, but perhaps this becomes too much to push it over the edge. Now, perhaps it won't go that route, but I do think it will be an interesting angle to explore this concept. Regardless though, this new lore shows that Ellie is not necessarily as special as she was once considered. It's not so much of a mutation or a fluke. This is actually something that could probably be replicated and that there may be many others out there. And perhaps it doesn't even have to happen at birth. Perhaps when Abby bit off Ellie's fingers from that same hand as her fresh new bite, that small bit of micro exposure created some sort of immunity in her as well. Or perhaps through the events of the story, we're going to end up up running into someone else who has that exact same gift. All this is very interesting to think about and why I don't think the immunity storyline should be abandoned in the series and why I think it may actually end up being central to the series. Regardless, I do think it will play a larger role in The Last of Us Part 3, and I'm excited to possibly get that experience. But is The Last of Us Part 3 even happening? Well, this video goes into that, so you should check it out. But otherwise, so long, pooper troopers.